if you don't start with the bones of a, of a good script, none of these improvs and comedy bits are going to work. Um, and so that setup at the very beginning was crucial. If we didn't get that setup right where you understood what was happening, it's a little complex, right? Because you have oh, yeah. a documentary that these two brothers are setting to do out, and then you have the reboot camp, which is the feature of the documentary. And so there's the character, Gordon St. Pierre, the guru, and then there's the real guy, Seymour. And if you don't set this up right, it's very confusing. Who am I? What should I be? Who should I be? It was a great concept. We would create a larger than life personality with a unique self-help program and document the process. God bless Evo because, you know, a lot of writers and a lot of directors are very tunnel visioned where this is my project, this is my baby, and it's this. And I don't want to hear about this and I don't want to hear about this. This is my lane. And, um, and he was open to all of it. I mean, we changed the character of Jimmy, who was originally a surfer dude. And Kelly Price, who played my brother, was actually cast as Jimmy. And the guy who was originally gonna play my buddy, the filmmaker, fell out. And so we were kind of scrambling now what to do. And I said to Evo, I have an idea. And just let it sit for a day. And it, it takes a day or two. And I said, what if Kelly is not Jimmy? What if he's my younger brother? And what if, instead of it being my buddy who shoots documentaries, who's the guy with the camera filming, wouldn't it be more powerful if it's my brother? The stupider the approach, the more people loved it. Today we're going to dump the virus and the malware into the toilet. We just had characters that didn't exist in the script. It was like my producer, uh, Tim Alec Mully, our executive producer, who was phenomenal on this shoot, um, uh, who was there and, and gave us drone footage and one of, one of my rocks. He said, let me call Jerul. He said, you can call Jerul? He goes, yeah, he's a friend of mine. Next thing you know, he's like, we're flying Jerul out. He's in New York, he lives in New York. He's like, we're gonna fly him out and he'll come do a day. And Evo said to me, oh, this is great. What are, what are we doing? What are we, what are we doing with him? I said, I don't know, <laughs> we'll figure it out. And you, uh, did. And you absolutely and, did. And then on the same day, David Keckner showed up and it was like, we were trying to get him. We couldn't quite connect or reach. We didn't know if he was coming or he wasn't coming. And then he came. Son of a bitch. And I mean, we worked through their anger issues in the scene and, and God bless these two guys for being so open and so honest. And, and that was the key that Evo handed down from the top. Nobody push it, nobody get sticky, play it real. And if we all commit to playing it real, and that's another secret of Mike Shorts um, that I've learned from him, is the funniest guys do the least. This is more, yes. I've, I've heard that so many that's times. So many They've been times. told to me as a performer so many times as well. Just remember less is more. Well, like the guy standing on the couch. All you do is stand on the couch. <laughs> your, your perspective changes. That's what happened with Billy Morrison, the rocker. Can we talk about some of those some of those threads that that you weave in that that make it so much more than just a silly comedy? It's not by any means just a silly comedy. I, I mean, absolutely, and and that is that's all Evo. So that's that's the 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 meat of the script that always was there. Is that you had these two brothers. Um, who set out to do something and, uh, and power corrupts. That was all scripted. Everything about that relationship and of course the antagonist, Claire, you gotta have an antagonist that comes in, the, the sexy, powerful uh, woman that, uh, that seduces Seymour uh, the same way he's actually been seducing these people. It's, it's pretty ironic uh, that he becomes a victim in the very thing that he set up. When Gordon, you know, takes off the mask and says, you know, this is all a, all a fake and they refuse to believe it or the, the, the members say, yeah, this is perfect. Wow, you're, yeah. you've got us even more. I mean, it's, it's like politics today. Nothing you can say will change anyone's mind. The, the, more, the more lies you hear, the more they believe. Yeah, truth is at the center of this. I, I think that's a, a, a tremendous observation. Uh, we see the world through a subjective lens. So uh, it's like, it's not that one and one is two. We have math, which is exact, and yet somehow 
everything is subjective now. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on right now where people are dying for self-help. People are searching for spirituality and connection and uh, a higher sense of being. And they're looking for someone to give that to them. And if there's a message in this movie, it's not just a cautionary tale of be careful who you trust with being vulnerable to, but, but also the change has got to come from within. That's kind of my last line in the film. What was it like though, working with uh, the, uh, the Begley's and the Roberts? And, uh, and the you, you know, it's amazing because these older seasoned actors, I mean, Eric Roberts, two-time Oscar nominee, uh, Ed Begley, you're talking about one of my heroes. By the way, one of the champions of this genre, of the mockumentary genre, Mighty Win, Best in Show. I mean, you can go down the list. He's been in 15 of the top mockumentaries. My wife convinced me to go to one of the events. Oh, I'll take the love, Jean. Okay, I'm really not comfortable with this.